Well, 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 look what's back on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Yeah, I decided I'd muck about with tubes again. Which is probably not the best idea right now, since we're going through a bit of a heat wave and these things, well, mucking about with something that gets hot in the middle of a heat wave is probably not the best idea, but anyway, what I want to do is I want to do an experimental microphone preamplifier circuit. <laughs> but the only trouble is, you cannot power these from a phone charger. So what I'm going to do in this video is make a high voltage power supply that's going to give me the 200 to 300 volts I need and also a steady 12 volts or 6 volts for the filaments. So, right, so let's... this is my first experiment. I have built a Hartley oscillator. So what we got here is I got a piece of, you know, ordinary audio cable and wrapped that around this core. I'm using the inner wire for the um, feedback winding and the outer wire as the actual primary. And I've also got a lot of, about 103 turns of thin wire, which is going to be the high voltage winding. So let's connect this up and see what we get. And the light bulb isn't an important part of the circuit, that's just there to limit the current in case something goes wrong. And this LED is to prevent, you know, high voltage flyback getting into the MOSFET's gate. So, let's see if this works. Well, I would say that's working. We're getting about 116 volts out, although it is ringing quite audibly. And for all you waveform aficionados, I'm not going to disappoint, so let's have a look at some waveforms. While a moth has sex with my light. So, this is the waveform at the primary. This is the waveform at the gate. which seems to have a lot of negative peaks despite the LED. And this is the waveform at our output. Nice and smooth. Let's just measure what's actually coming out of the inductor. I think that would be a much better way of doing things. And this is our output waveform. So, this circuit appears to be working, but the voltage is not quite as high as I want it to be. I'm only powering this on about 7 volts at the moment, so let's take it up to 12. Let's see what we get. So this is on 12 volts, we're getting about a good 225 volts now, but look at the brightness of that bulb. It's pulling an excessive amount of current. So, I think we need to come up with something else. Okay, well I couldn't go without trying another transformer. So I've got a mains transformer here. And I've got this hooked up to the um, uh, secondary. Seems to be a kind of weird arrangement because we've got a centre tap winding here, but... The two ends are here and here appear to have marked that on this transformer, so we've got 12, 0, 12. I don't know why it's arranged like that, but let's turn this on at about 6 volts and see what we get. Oh, that's much better. We're getting about 218 volts, and only about 6 volts. Although I think I can hear a bit of ringing coming from that transformer. I'm not exactly sure what the frequency is. 
So, I'm just going to hook this up to my scope and see. We're already at 230 volts. So this is working much better than that other one was. Well, according to my scope here, it's about 539 hertz, give or take. So this circuit here would have been perfect if I got the voltages I wanted with the 12 volt input and if the frequency was higher. But alas, it didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. Well, it did do what it's supposed to do, but it isn't quite what we need. A while back, although I didn't make a video about it, I made this boost converter. Uses a triple five timer as the oscillator and the standard boost converter topology. There's no regulation on it or anything like that, but I've just got a simple nine volt battery here and I'm just gonna connect that up for a couple of seconds. Now, I thought putting a 350 microfarad capacitor as the filter capacitor on the output would be enough, but it's not enough. So look at that. Over 400 volts from a 9 volt battery. So, I'm not going to touch this thing right now. Because we've got over 300 volts on it. So it's really efficient at making high voltages. The question is... Can we power a tube with this? And I'm going to wait for that to discharge. Okay, so let's see if this thing works. So we've got a boost converter here, a valve preamp circuit here, meter here to measure the HT voltage, or the B plus, or the whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to be powering the triple five timer of 12 volts, and that 12 volts is also going to power the filament. And I have a variable voltage, which I'm going to put into the boost converter part of the circuit. So, let's see what we get. I'm going to turn the power on. Okay. Voltage is climbing, and that valve is glowing very brightly. Because I've wired this up completely incorrectly. That was a close one. That filament was getting twice the voltage it should. Hopefully it has survived. I was getting 24 volts instead of 12. Just goes to show you that even the best of us make mistakes sometimes. Alright, so with about 1.5 volts going into the boost converter part of the circuit, we're at about 83 volts. I noticed that got to about 100 and 50 before the, you know, before the valve warmed up and started pulling the voltage down. So can we get to about 200 volts? I'm increasing the supply voltage to the boost converter. Yeah, we can get about... We've got about 223 volts there now. Not sure what the current is, but yeah. It is giving the valve the voltage that we need. Let's see if I can get that to about 200... Yeah, that'll do right there. Question is, though, is the voltage noise-free enough to use this as a power supply for a tube preamplifier? So that's what I'm going to test right now. I've got this microphone connected up to the valve, and I've got my mixer also connected up to the valve. That's connected up to the valve's output. So, um, let's see if this works. Okay, I am making a recording through the valve preamp being powered off my boost converter to see how well this works. And although that valve took a little bit of a pounding a um, few minutes earlier, it seems to have survived. And it appears to be amplifying this microphone just fine. The question is, how high is this voltage going to rise before the valve warms up and starts pulling the voltage down? If it gets to over 300 volts, I'm going to scrap this and move over to something else, but let's just give it a little test here. Let's see. 
yep, we went over 300 volts there, so... Um, let's do something else. Of course, now I've got to wait for that capacitor to discharge. So, so far our boost converter seems to be the most efficient way of getting high voltage. The only trouble is that I've got no way to regulate this thing. And you saw how high the voltage can go. So, I'm not giving up on this, so I might find a way to regulate this. But what I want to do now, I just want to investigate one more way of doing this. Now, somewhere here I have a thing that I was going to use for the thing, but I can't find the thing. A while back I was going to make a switch mode power supply. I never really got around to it. Using an IR2153D chip. Now, I don't know if I've got any of these left. So I'm just going to wire up this chip and see if it still works. And if it does still work, I'm going to do something with it. Okay, so I've rebuilt the circuit to a point where it will do something. So when we turn the power on and probing the output of the chip, we can see it is in fact working. The chip is oscillating, which is what it's supposed to do. Although it's oscillating faster than it's supposed to. I mean, this chip's only really good for up to about 100 kilohertz, and I'm trying to squeeze 260 kilohertz out of it. But the point is that it's working, and that's what matters. So this is the idea I've had. How about making a switch mode step up half bridge converter? That is what this little chip is going to do, and that's what this little circuit is for. I need to check that it's working first before I connect anything up to it, so let's do that right now. Okay, so I'm just going to test the waveform at both MOSFET gates, because that's what this little chip is. It's a self-oscillating high-side and low-side MOSFET driver, so let's see what we've got on the low-side gate. Good. Let's see what we got on the high side gate. Also good. So I'm just going to go and build the other side of the half bridge, which is going to take me all of, like, five seconds. And here it is. So, let's see if it works. I have absolutely no idea what kind of voltage we're going to get out of it, or even if it's going to work. Uh, let's have a look. That's just a quick on and off. We got about 57 volts. I think one thing I'd better do though, as I don't know how much power this thing is going to consume, I just want to do my little light bulb trick. Right, so with the light bulb, we should have some indication of how much current's flowing. Well, look at that. It's not lighting up at all. But we're only getting about 58 volts. And we need more than that. So I think we need a better transformer, such as this one, which came out of a computer power supply. So this transformer has several different secondaries, a few of which are all connected together on this central wire here, and the other ends I've marked. Also the primary, which I'm going to be using as the secondary, is center tapped, so if we don't get the voltage I need out of this transformer, well, you know, Okay, well, let's try our computer power supply transformer. I've had to put the meter on the side to get everything in shot, but let's see what voltage we get out of this. See, only 20 volts. Well, I was expecting a bit more than that. Well, I'm just going to play around with the contacts on here, see if I can get a bit of higher voltage. Well, this is a little disappointing. This is about the highest voltage I can get. The highest voltage I can get out of this transformer is about 55 volts. Which isn't much higher than this one that I wound. So, well this is a little disappointing. The highest voltage I can get out of this transformer is about 54 volts. Which isn't really any higher than the one that I made, so... Right, so I've ditched the half bridge. So now we've got a capacitor connecting the primary, or rather the secondary, of this transformer. And the other side of the secondary of this transformer is connected to ground through this light bulb. So let's see if this works. 
And again, that's rather disappointing. It's a little bit more voltage. Close, but no donut. So, all in all, it seems like we have a winner. And that is the, um, whatchamacallit. Now, if I could just find some way to regulate this, that would be really good. Although, I think this video is probably getting long, so I'll investigate a way to do that. Maybe in another video. So, until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye.